Hello and welcome to another edition of Kirkley's Local Television's Weekly Wind-Up, the programme that aims to be informative, amusing, interesting and sometimes provocative. I'm Kyle Warwick and joining me on this week's programme are Liberal Ke Democrat Councillor for the Cone Valley, David Ridgway. Morning. Oliver Smith, a local artist, designer and entrepreneur. Morning. And Weekly Wind-Up resident, Dave Hodgson. Welcome to the programme. A prominent story in the news recently has been the case of Chedwin Evans, former professional footballer and convicted rapist. Having served his sentence and been released from prison, Evans is now looking to return to football. His former club Sheffield United have allowed Evans to train with the club, a decision that has led to the resignation of a number of club ambassadors. The club has stated that the re-signing of Evans is a long way off. Yet this has not stopped a petition against the move being signed by 150,000 people. There has also been a suggestion by some of Sheffield United's sponsors that they will pull sponsorship if Evans is allowed to back into the club. On the flip side of this, Professional Footballers Association Chief Gordon Taylor has stated his belief that Evans should be allowed to return to the club having served his sentence. This is a sentiment shared by some Sheffield United fans that have been heard singing Evans's name at recent matches. Councillor Ridgway, how do you feel about people like Mr Evans who are in the spotlight? Do you feel they should be held to a higher standard than the general public? Well, um, before I answer that, Kyle, I just want to correct you on some of the things you said in your introduction. First of all, he hasn't served his sentence. He's served half of it. He's now out on licence. Secondly he has claimed his innocence ever since he went into prison. Thirdly, I gather that his sentence is to be reviewed in any event. And to go back to your question, um, do I feel that uh, footballers are in a higher prominent position than the rest of the public? Of course they are. Are they likely therefore to be held to a higher degree of behaviour? The public I expect would like to think so but they're just ordinary people like you and me. So why should they be? I don't see any reason for that at all. Evans isn't the only professional sports person that has served a prison sentence. Correct. Uh, both Lee Hughes and Marlon King served prison sentences and returned to football with minimal um, coverage in the press on the situation. Correct. Do you feel it's the nature of Evans's crime that's turned so many so vehemently against him? There is no doubt about that. But it, it's interesting looking at the crime in that he was um, invited by his friend, whose name I can't remember, plays Portsmouth City, to go to his friend's bedroom because his friend had, quote, got a girl, unquote. Well, the first question one has to ask is, why was a girl there anyway? Secondly, how is it that a separate jury found his friend completely innocent of, of uh, raping that girl uh, and thirdly why has Chad Evans taken the the rap for the whole affair it is imbalanced but then British law often is am I an apologist for Chad Evans certainly not his um, his, his behavior crosses the boundaries in all sorts of places but 150,000 people signing a petition is a lot of public opinion I was invited to sign the petition. I didn't, uh, because I don't think it's right. It's very easy for Gordon Taylor to say, yes, he served his time, he should be playing again. Uh, because logically, that is correct. But the crime that he's committed is of a nature where it is bound to create uh, controversy. However, the sentiment behind all this is that uh, if, he, if he starts to play football again, the, uh, the, the club that, he, that takes him on will receive enormous approbation from the public. So what do you do? My feeling is that he should now not be playing football until his, his, um, either his sentence is reviewed in public so that we all know exactly where the situation is or that his term on licence has been completed uh, in which case he is then eligible because he's completed, he's really completed his sentence. Uh, and at that stage, if Sheffield United are daft enough to take him on his books, then they stand to take the fall. Oliver, I know you're not big into your sport, but this is kind of a, a, more of a social issue than a sporting issue. Yeah. 
do you feel certain crimes should exclude a person from certain jobs? Um, well, I think there's obviously like the safety issue. You shouldn't be around vulnerable people or kids or anything. That should be totally out. Um, but then it could be up to employers, really. I mean, if you have served your time and you're deemed to be uh, fit to be in society, then I think you should be able to work in, in a job. If you're in the public eye, obviously that brings another uh, dimension to it. But again, I'd say a lot of that is going to be sponsors are going to want their product associated with a rapist, so a convicted rapist. So that's going to be the decision's going to be made by them anyway. I definitely don't think that they should think carefully before putting the name behind, you know, somebody who's convicted rapist. And obviously, if, uh, if he's not finished his sentence, uh, my real problem is that the crime is not seen as, as serious as it is with the sentencing. I mean, mm. five years even is not enough, I don't think, for rape. And two and a half for uh, good behaviour or whatever seems ridiculous. Do you agree with that, Dave? Yeah, I'd like to follow up on this idea of football as being in the public eye. And I think one thing where football could get its act back together with this is that uh, these are young lads coming up because they're good at football, suddenly they are in the public eye before they've got time to grasp the enormity of the situation that they're in. There are people, there are lads looking up to them. People are setting them up as heroes. Whether they want to be or not doesn't matter. So they, like us on even a small television station like KLTV, we do have to live by certain higher standards mm. than you would be if you were not in the public eye. Because just by being in the public eye, you have to accept a different set of standards. You have to be seen to be clean, let alone not just be clean. And I don't think these lads coming up are given sufficient time before their star stardom is burst on them to reconcile just what an enormity the situation is of their public and private behaviour. I think um, one of the things that I saw on a, a, a comment on Facebook was a, a Sheffield United fan who expressed it, that with a, a young daughter were Sheffield United to re-sign or to sign a convicted rapist he would be very conflicted in terms of the message that it would send to his daughter if he took his daughter down to Sheffield United. Um, so on that moral level, should clubs not think about the, the message that they are sending out to their supporters, David? Well, are you going to um, go down the track here? Not you, you, but is society going to go down the track here of... Um, a statutory crime being committed for which there's been a sentence uh, enacted and served. We're now down the full five years. When that person then is free to go and pursue his career, his work, even her work or her career, of course, is society then going to convict that person a second time? Is that not double jeopardy? British, British law, all the way back into the Middle Ages, has never uh, sustained double jeopardy, and nor should it. But if society is going to... I mean, we are actually seeing with this Facebook um, petition, it's actually an online petition, we're actually seeing the modern equivalent of a lynch mob, and I am not comfortable with that. And finally, um, I'll direct this at you first, Dave. Um, it seems that society seems to be quite willing to hold people in the spotlight to a higher standard as role models. Um, a lot of the time, these seem to be with sports people. Um, do you think if that is the case, then we should hold people in other areas of society who are in the spotlight, politicians, Ooh. bankers, um, to a higher standard. Be careful is my advice to anybody in the public eye. Consider everything and consider your future. Look at the ramifications. They can be horrendous. But just, just one point about this. Yeah, I think David is absolutely right about the lynch mob mentality, which is 
No, obviously not as much as he, uh, of a heinous crime, but I think it is approaching a crime. How do you feel about that, Oliver? Uh, I disagree a bit, to be honest. I wouldn't say that it's a lynch mob. I think that it's just now with the ease of social media, people can get their opinion across. If they want to start a petition because they don't feel that this guy should be playing for this club because he's been convicted of this crime, I don't think that that's particularly bad. I'm sure that, well, there definitely is matters when online it is taken too far and it is, uh, it is bad. I don't think that this is that case. I think if all those people have signed this, it shows that there's a strong feeling that they don't want him to be playing for that club and I, I can agree with that or I can agree with their right to sign the petition anyway. Well, let's just take this one stage further. Let's just say his sentence is reviewed. Let's just say it goes to appeal. Let's just say that on appeal, that he's found actually not guilty, as his friend was. Mm -hmm. OK? Where do the 150,000 petition signers go there? I'm afraid that's all we've got time for on this topic. Mm -hmm. Clearly, it is one that spits, splits opinion quite dramatically. We would like to hear your opinions on the topic. You can do so by email, info at kirkleyslocaltv.com. You can also find us on Twitter by searching at The Weekly Windup. Please join us after this short break. Welcome back. Joining me this week are Councillor David Ridgway, Oliver Smith and Dave Hodgson. We're going to go straight on to the survey that has been doing the rounds on Facebook. Specifically, the survey sent out from Prime Minister David Cameron's Facebook page pertaining to immigration. Oliver, I know you've seen the survey. Mm -hmm. um, what's your opinion on its content? Well, in my opinion, the whole thing is not an issue that they're making it out to be. And this is not just this, this government. I mean, all of politics and uh, the media just whip this up into a hype and a frenzy when I don't think immigra immigration is uh, a topic that should be discussed, that should be in the limelight as much as it is. Yeah, it should be, but maybe for the, you know, the good that it does. We're, like, this country is built on immigrants. Uh, they bring so much to the economy. They do so many jobs that um, a lot of English people won't do. Uh, so I just really think this, this whole thing and their stance on immigration and all this and how it's like um, a major topic is just rubbish. And it's, it shouldn't be. We should be concentrating on things that are more important people are just using it as an excuse to like, uh, oh, we'll throw the book at the immigrants, we'll blame them, or we'll use them as a bargaining chip to kind of uh, get ahead in the polls or whatever, and it's ridiculous. Do you feel then that the survey serves a particular person at purpose for Mr Cameron? Well, yeah, because they love to uh, have this kind of stance on immigration and uh, they think, well, they're presenting it to people as if it's this huge issue, and it is quite controversial. Um, it does whip up a bit of a frenzy, and the press doesn't help by adding to it. Mm. But why? Why is it important? The figures uh, show that it isn't a drain on the economy that they make out it is. Um, and it's the same with the kind of benefit system. The non-issues to me that we shouldn't be concentrating on. Do you agree with that, Councillor Ridgeway? Well, yes, I do. Um, it's, it's quite extraordinary how um, people take, take attitudes on matters which actually don't affect them at all. I can remember some years ago cam canvassing in, in the Cone Valley, uh, in Marsden as it, as it happens, and, and uh, I was uh, attacked on the doorstep by uh, a person who uh, said, we, we don't want any more immigration. I said, well, you've not got any around here anyway. Well, I know we haven't got any around here, but we don't want any, any anyway, you know. We don't want any immigration. We don't want any more immigrants coming around here. So I just find the whole thing is, is, um, is extraordinary. I mean, what would the effect be? Hospitals would close. Transport would close. Um, even some schools would close. Life would close. And is Mr Farage going to actually find people from the job centres to cover it for? The, 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 the guy is, is so totally wrong. Oliver, you are absolutely right. It's an issue which has been built on people's fears in exactly the same way that the issues were built in the 1930s in Germany with regard to the Jewish population. And I think it stinks. I think it's absolutely appalling. 
and it's time that people started to stand up and shout, you're wrong, Mr Farage, go away. So in that sense, do you feel that it is playing on the, the what's seen as kind of a rise of right-wing nationalist yes. ideals in the country? Yes. Yeah. Actually, I slightly disagree with that. Yeah. I think it's playing on fear rather than right-wing nationalist. Thing. Could be, could be, but I, I think fear, fear is the word. I, I can sum this up for me in, in a statement. If it wasn't for immigrants and asylum seekers, this programme wouldn't be going out at the no, moment. It wouldn't. Just think about that, everybody. This programme would not be going out if it wasn't for somebody who has come from abroad. Poor white middle class panel. Exactly. <laughs> Excellent. Sounds well, good today. Yeah, but the problem is there are more and more people being born. The population is going up. There is competition for jobs. If you haven't got the right qualifications, you are going to end up nowhere. And more and more people are ending up really almost on the scrap heap, particularly how things seem to be at the moment because there's big competition. It's all entrepreneurial. And some people can't do that. Right. OK, so some people come from abroad and they can do it. Mm. Now, and, and it's the jealousy, it's the fear, it's the jealousy. How come they've come from there and they're doing this and they've got that company running? I should be doing that. But what they don't think, the people that are saying that, is actually I couldn't do that because I'm not capable of it. And it's that fear that people like the UKIP party are saying, yes, yes, we can get popular. We will strike a chord. The National Front did it a few years ago. They, they rose in popularity a bit because they play on the fears of others. And, and, and so did Adolf Hitler. Yes, he did. I'd just look, like uh, say, I don't know if there is this rise in nationalism. There's, it's definitely portrayed that there is this huge nationalist kind of uh, rising and the, the country's so polarised. Polarized. I don't think it is. It's just in the media it's portrayed that it is. Oh, well, no, I disagree with that, Oliver. Uh, look at the rise of nationalism in Scotland with the SNP vote on, on, on the, uh, on the um, referendum they had a, mm. a, in the summer. Uh, for, for 46, 47 percent to vote, we want to be on our own, that's nationalism rising. Look at the by-election that took place in Clacton with UKIP winning with a massive majority. And look at the result in, in Rochester and, and uh, Strood tomorrow. Again, I predict that they will win with a substantial majority. And that is demonstrating a rise in, in nationalism. Right, now, whether that's, just one moment, whether that will be sustained into the general election next year is another matter. And I, where I would agree with you is that I think the fundamental uh, basic attitude of the British people is one of fairness, it's one of, if you like, small l liberal fairness, where people just want to get on with their day-to-day -day work, their day-to-day -day lives, and, and other people can go ranting around like us for. Uh, yeah, I think you definitely could be right. What I mean is that I think the media portrayal is skewed, and that has Correct. probably led to a rise in yeah, the popularity because it's been reported on so much and they're, they're getting all this airtime, then obviously people are going to be listening more and more people are exposed to the views when really it is, I would say, a minority and the majority, like you say, want to get on peacefully and yeah. just live in a multicultural Britain. With this survey, a lot of the, uh, the questions in it are quite leading and as well play on some of the fears that we've been talking about. What do you think it says about the modern political process that uh, a main political party would... Uh, put a survey out like this, Oliver? Well, to me, politics now is much more like a popularity contest where you're just throwing around these, these hot topics to gain as many points as you can over your opponent instead of working to make a better country. It's, you know, who can be the, who can be the most popular in the media by saying this strong stance on whatever issue and uh, when it really shouldn't be, it should be about, you know, solving the issue. How cynical. <laughs> but actually, I don't think cynical enough. Because I think, uh, as it's on Facebook, I gather, and I've not seen it, it's actually pandering to a new generation. It's pandering to your generation. It's actually saying, hey, look, I'm the Prime Minister and I'm doing a survey on Facebook. I'm with you guys. Come and join me. Mm. Now, that is cynical. Mm. Yeah. Yes, uh, it, that, that is, is a very, very good point, actually. But again, um, I can sum it up in three words. 
it sells newspapers. Now, politics is seen as a smart career move. And for a smart career move to work, you've got to get yourself elected. So what, you do, what do you do? You find Anything. the lowest common denominator Correct. with the most people supporting it, and you go for it. Absolutely. And that's what's gone wrong with politics. Seems like there's uh, quite a lot of cynicism towards uh, politics going on on the panel today. Um, <laughs> Once again, if you'd like politics. to make your opinions known on the story that you've heard, you can do so by email, info at kirkleyslocaltv.com or on Twitter, search at The Weekly Windup. Now we're going to move on to the Festival of Light, or rather the uh, alternative marketplace that will be taking place at the Festival of Light, which is an opportunity for local traders to set up uh, market stalls and sell goods to the people attending the Festival of Light. Um, how do you, do you think that this is a good idea for our local traders? Uh, definitely a good idea. Uh, Huddersfield's got quite a good, uh, especially young, independent scene in clothing and things like that. But there's not many opportunities for them to all display themselves together and uh, create a bit, of a, a bit of a buzz around it. Um, and if you're not involved like I am in some kind of alternative uh, independent scene, it you might overlook it, you might not be aware of it, and so it's good to have something that other members of the public might be able to see and get involved with. Yeah. Um, Dave, how, how do you feel about the marketplace? Do you think it's a good opportunity? Yeah, I notice already. The, what a great title. It's, free, it's now the Huddersfield Fringe Festival. <laughs> now, if Edinburgh can do it, why not Huddersfield? What a cracking idea. All right, it's not performance. It's it, it shops, it's boutiques and things like that. But, yeah, there's a, there's a festival of light and it's now got a fringe fair. It's getting bigger. That means more and more people must be coming to it because the storekeepers won't go just to stand there freezing all night. So that means things are happening in Huddersfield and Huddersfield is becoming I mean, once again, thank goodness, a go-ahead place. More people at the Festival of Light, David. Is this something that uh, tickles your fancy? <laughs> well, the Festival of Light, interesting. Um, the Festival of Light has been popular. There's no doubt of that. The manner in which the, uh, the what was the Huddersfield Town Centre Association have organised it has caused disruption to the ordinary shopkeepers and restaurants. But... Uh, two or three days out of a year is, is not excessive and if, it, if it's a marketplace for new alternative um, uh, businesses to bring their wares to the public's eye then I have to say that it's, that's got to be a good thing. What concerns me now is that the money to be made available for the Festival of Light uh, which comes from the council is likely to be affected into the future because of the council budget cuts. And that's going to have an ongoing effect of um, uh, driving the whole of Kirklees, the whole of our local area, into um, a rather sad and grey area. And on the basis of that, on balance, uh, organisations like the Festival of Light bring uh, a bit of joy back into people's lives, uh, even in a, in a recession like this. If we can continue to do that, then I would be a supporter. But it's got to be done right. And indeed, uh, the Food and Drink Festival, which takes place in the summer, uh, exactly the same arguments prevail. Uh, when that started, it was specifically for local uh, producers to have an opportunity to, to um, bring their wares to the marketplace. But now it's just uh, a national market for uh, a lot of people from across the country to bring uh, their wares to Huddersfield. Nothing wrong with that. But unfortunately, the profits go back out of the area and I think that is on balance perhaps something to be debated but it's popular and it, and, it, and it brings a certain degree of joy into people's lives and that has got to be a good thing especially at times of, of budgetary cuts. I think that's something we can all agree with. Unfortunately that is absolutely all we have time for on this episode of the Weekly Wind Up. Mm. Once again, if you would like to get in contact with us about any of the stories that you've heard today, you can do so by email, info at kirkleyslocaltv.com or on our Twitter page, search at The Weekly Windup. Thank you very much to all my guests for joining us today. We'll hope that you join us next week for another edition of The Weekly Windup. I've been Kyle Warwick. Goodbye. Goodbye.